Surgery for complex tethered spinal cord can be tedious and technically challenging, and it can take a long time. These are some of the longer operations that I do, and they usually take anywhere from four to six hours, sometimes a little longer, depending on the level of difficulty of the case. What takes so long? Well, sorting out normal anatomy under a microscope using microsurgical technique, stimulating nerve roots or what may be nerve roots to look for muscle responses and identify things that you need to protect and not harm. You don't want to cut nerve roots. And then just carefully working through either the scar tissue or the lipoma attachment in such a way as to not cause any harm. And this is a tedious and lengthy operation. As far as the child is concerned, it's not too bad, really. They have some back pain from the surgery for a day or two, but usually they're up and out of bed on the second or third day after surgery and typically go home on the third or so day after surgery. There are risks to the operation. These include the general risks of any operation, anesthesia and so forth, but specific to this, are the risks of spinal fluid leak because we have to reconstruct the spinal fluid sac so that it doesn't leak and then some risk of causing new neurologic deficit that wasn't there before from manipulation of the cord and the nerve roots. Follow-up care after a complex tethered spinal cord usually goes something like this. We'll, we'll see the child a couple of weeks after they go home to check the incision and make sure things are healing well. And then about three months after surgery, we get a new MRI of the spine to see how things look after surgery, after things have, have healed up. And that gives us a new baseline for comparison later on if there are questions of new problems. We generally get a new urodynamic study, a test of the bladder and sphincter functions at about three months after surgery to see what that new baseline is. Hopefully if there's been any abnormality before surgery, sometimes that's improved. Hopefully it's not made any worse. And then we have that as a comparison for baseline in the future. Thereafter, we follow the child usually annually. Depending on the function of their bladder, sometimes we get more urodynamic studies. I follow these children along with my colleagues in urology usually in our spina bifida center. They're also followed along with me by my colleagues in orthopedic surgery who watch them for development of orthopedic abnormalities and treat those as needed. We watch for spinal curves and so forth. So we continue to follow them for the development of symptomatic tethered cord again as a result of the operation and from scarring.